God had a purpose and a plan in my life, just like he has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of your lives. You see, I was meant to be an abortion. When my mom was pregnant, uh, my brother was only a couple of months old, or not even a year old, and my mom was, you know, contemplating uh, uh, having an abortion. And uh, my grandfather was even paying her for her to have that abortion. So you see how the enemy just wanted to wipe me out from the beginning? He knew that hundreds of thousands, if not millions, will hear the gospel of Jesus Christ through my life. So finally my mom, when she felt me move in her stomach, she decided to keep me. And what happened was, see my mom and my dad got together, but my dad would use a lot of drugs. My mom told me he was allergic to marijuana. I believe it was ecstasy. I believe it was uh, uh, acid. I believe it was something else because he would hallucinate. So he would come home and just do radical stuff. You know, my mom would be like, what's wrong with you? He'll be naked in bed and he'll be fishing. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm fishing. Leave me alone. You know? So anyways, my mom took him to the hospital and said, you know what? I don't want my children growing up seeing this. So if you do this again, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. So she caught him again. But the second time was like, look at the holes in my hands. I'm Jesus Christ. So what she did at that point, she said, you know what? We're going to have to separate. Long story short, this happened before I turned three. Uh, my father left my mom and, and just never came back. So I grew up without my, my, my father. And at age two, my parents were already doing illegal transactions in the house. So a man broke into the house one day and he went and he put a gun to my head at two years old. And he was telling my mom, where's the money? Where's the money? That's the second time the enemy tried to take me out. Pass me one more time, see what happens. I'm just kidding. So what happened was, it was the second time he tried to take me out. So he put the gun you know, to my head, and he was telling my mom, where's the money? The Bible says the love of money is the root to all kind of evil. Praise God, you read your Bible. So what happened was, she didn't know Jesus Christ. You see, my father didn't know Jesus. My mom never knew Jesus. My grandfather never knew Jesus. And my great-grandfather never knew Jesus. I was the first in three generations to know Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Amen? My family still ain't saved, but they're coming soon. I believe in God's promises. So watch this. My mom said, I don't know where the money is at. She knew it was in the closet. I don't, I don't know where the money is at. So they put the gun to the head. They, my mom started screaming and they ran out. Listen, at age 13, I remember grabbing a plate and throwing, throwing it on my, father's, uh, my brother's face. And I ran out. My grandfather chased me. He chased me uh, around the house and he got a heart attack. He started getting chest pains. He went to the hospital and he died. My mom looked me in the eyes, guys. He looked me in the eyes. She said, your grandfather died because of you. Can you imagine the anger that I had inside as a child? Why I was so rebellion? You know, I was in rebellion. It's because of all these things that were happening, all these things that I was seeing as a child. I almost got raped twice as a child. One in a park, and it was some guys that grabbed me, and I said, look, my mom, and I kicked him, I ran, he grabbed me again, he hit me against the door, I got away, I didn't get raped. The second time was behind a garbage dump, and a guy said, you like this radio? It's a little kid. Yeah, I like the radio. I came in, and uh, he tried to molest me, and he did it. So you see, the enemy was all this time trying to attack me, attack me, attack me, but you know what? Things got better. The Bible says that apart from God, you can't do anything. I didn't know that. I didn't know John 15, 5. You know, so I started going to college. I was about 8, 20 years old, and I started uh, uh, getting an education. Uh, but I had a really nice car, guys. Really, really nice car. Nice interior, nice rims, music. My car would jump. I had hydraulics on it. So one day, I went through a certain neighborhood, and there was a bunch of gang members. So anyways, I start jumping the car. One of the guys curses at me. Through, I stopped the car. I hit reverse. I said, what you said? Oh, man, you got a nice car. That's what I thought you said. And he says, let me jump your car. So he began to jump my car. And one guy came up to me. He goes, those are my rims, and I want them. And I said, you know what? Uh, we'll check, and if it's yours, I'll give them to you in another day. He says, no, I want them now. My heart dropped at that moment. I was alone in the car, and I had my gun with me, and I wasn't afraid to use it. So one of the guys grabbed me, and they yanked me out of the car, and they start beating me and beating me. And I'm holding the gun so they won't grab the gun from my hand. And I'm holding the gun, I'm holding the gun. And now, um, I believe that at one point I pulled the gun, and, and I hit myself, and I started bleeding through my eyes. So I couldn't see through one eye because of the blood. One of the guys were hitting me uh, in the back of my neck. The other one was grabbing me so tight on my chest 
that it ripped uh, my skin and I started bleeding from my shirt. So now I have blood on my, uh, on my shirt. I have uh, a, a, a big old bump in the back of my head, blood coming down. And I felt literally, guys, like my soul was being ripped out of my body. I was like, I'm going to die. I don't know if you, go, you guys know the feeling what it is to almost die, but I felt like I was literally going to die. And what happened was, this guy started kicking me on my ribs, and I started going down. And I said, guys, take the car. They said, no, now we're going to kill you. My heart dropped. I couldn't taste water in my mouth. I mean, saliva. And I said, I'm dead. So what's the first thing I did was I released a gunshot. Boom. I shot him in the heart. Now, you see, a lot of the youth that are around here, they say, man, I got time. Man, you know what? Look, look how old you are. You got to enjoy life. Let me enjoy life. So I released that gunshot. It hit him on the chest. The two guys backed off. He looked me in the eyes, and I thought he was going to let me go. And he cursed at me, and he punched me in the face. Boom. So he grabbed me again, and he tried to reach for the gun. I shot him the second time. His body jumped up. He looked at his chest. And he cursed again and he punched me again. I shot him the third time and the fourth time is finally when I punched him. He went back. He got on one knee. He looked at me. I looked at the other guy. He went to go reach for his gun. I went to shoot the other guy in the head. He turned around. Long story short, I got in my car and I left. So now, this is the amazing thing, guys, is that 10 years went by. I gave my life to Christ. This happened when I was 20 years old. I gave my life to Christ when I was 24, and it was over a bet. When that happened, guys, I had a murdering spirit over me. I didn't care about people. Nobody could have speak to me about Jesus. How can you talk to me about Jesus? And I was meant to be an abortion. A gun was placed in my head. They, they blamed my grandfather's death on me, and now I killed somebody. What type of God will create some, someone like that? God ain't real. It was a bet. And over a bet, I went. And I listened to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tell you something that shocked me. After I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, and I started serving Him immediately, I had a contract over my life for uh, a half a million dollars. That guy was a drug dealer. His parents had a lot of money. So I had to uh, carry two guns on me, and people were constantly trying to kill me in the street. So I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, and, but check this out. Ten years went by. And the Lord said, I want you to go back to the neighborhood where I took you out of. I said, Lord, they're going to kill me. He said, is this about you or about me? Have you not died to yourself, been risen with me and now living for me? I'm like, that sounds good, Lord, but they're going to kill my family. I got three kids. He says, go. So I went back. I said, Lord, I need a confirmation. I'm scared. I'm going to die. I need a confirmation that this was you. I went to school to pick up my three little kids, uh, Dominic, Sergio, and Ceci. The hallways were filled, uh, the bell rang, and I saw this beautiful little African-American girl. About like this, she was 10 years old. And as I, my eyes locked on her, I walked towards her, and her mom shows up, and I said, she feels like my daughter, she's so beautiful. She looks at me and she starts going like this and shaking her head. And I'm like, oh, she caught the Holy Ghost, you know. And then she goes, she looks at me and she said, um, are you Sergio? So, you know, a lot of things started running through my mind. She probably knows me as a pastor, as a rapper. She probably saw me on television, TBN, so on and so forth. And I said, yeah, why? She goes, did you kill someone 10 years ago? Okay, my heart sunk again. My life was ripped out of me. The hallways got quiet. My kids, you know, I, I mean, I can't explain it, guys. I felt like I was just going to die again. And so I ran through my mind. I said, is it a family member? And I turned to her and I go, why? Is it a family member? She said, you killed my husband. You see that little girl? You killed her father. I could not, I can't explain the feeling, guys. I'll, I'll lie to you. I wrote the book and I tried to explain the feeling, but I, I couldn't explain it. Um... She told me, we thought you were a hitman. Her husband had stole uh, so many uh, kilos of cocaine and they thought that they paid me to kill him. But she says, but I know you're not a hitman. Guys, that's why it's so important to keep your testimony clean. For 15 years, I've never backslid once, giving God the glory and the praise. He did a new work in me. So watch this. She looked me in the eyes and my tears came down. You know, because I wanted God to erase that memory. I killed someone's uh, son. I killed the father. 
I took a human being's life. And the only thing that ran through my mind was, why didn't I die? This would have ended. And it's because God had a purpose and a plan in my life. She went, walked towards me, and I, was, I thought somebody was going to run through the, the, the doors and kill me. She hugged me. She kissed me. She says, I forgive you. Oh. Wow. That's when I knew that God had a purpose and a plan for my life. There's not a drug hole that I'm afraid to go into. There's not a person, I don't care how big, how many guns they got. I know that if God is with me, who can be against me? You know how many times a gun was placed to my head, guys? A gun was placed in my head as I was sleeping. The person pressed the trigger and it did not shoot. You know how many times I was shot at? And I've never been shot at one time. God has a purpose and a plan not only in my life, but each and every one of our lives. He has plans and plans to prosper, you guys. So what happened was, I got in my car. Guys, I never cried so much. That was a point in my Christian life where God tested me. I went through a divorce. I lost my children. I lost my car. Guys, my, heart, my house was on foreclosure. I had nothing but Jesus Christ. I remember getting on that bed and kneeling down and saying, God, I thought things were going to get better now that I'm with you. I'm a pastor. And you said, if I take care of your business, you're going to take care of mine. You said in Matthew 6, to first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. I didn't know that this was going to be added on to me. And you said to take care of your business, God. Look at what happened to me. Is it about you? No, God, it's about you. Would you still worship me? Yes, Daddy, I'll still worship you. And I began to worship God. That day I cried so much. My stomach was hurting. And, and, you know, but God had a purpose and a plan for my life. He had plans to prosper me. I thought it was over when it was in the world and I came to Christ. I was in a little Baptist church and I said, that's it, you're free. I was like, hallelujah, it's over. My problems are over. And that's when my problems started. I had to go against the current, guys. My mom was still drinking and smoking. My stepdad was still drinking. My friends were still using drugs and going to clubs and, 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 and having sex out of wedlock. And Jesus had a purpose in my life. He was seeking for holiness and righteousness in my life. He was purifying me. There were things that I used to do that I could no longer do. Because the Bible says that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I will be about around my friends and they'll go, oh, look at the little Christian. Oh, that's right, you're right, you're, you're the holy guy. My parents will make fun out of me. Jesus says, I didn't come to bring peace on earth, but I came to bring a sword that took place in my life. I knew that I was sealed by the Holy Spirit. I knew who I was, but I was down, dead to myself and alive in Christ. And I went through every trial and tribulation that you can think of. Not one family member was saved. None of my friends were saved. I was alone. But God had a purpose in my life, guys. And I tell you today that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. I went back to that neighborhood. For 10 years, I've been preaching in the same streets. We've seen at least in that corner three people stand up out of the wheelchair. Last week, a man came blind through one eye in a wheelchair. He stood up. He started walking, and he's no longer blind. And giving God the glory and the praise, we happen to record that. <laughs> Homeless people. I have videos of people shooting up heroin through their, their arms and heroin through their necks. And now they're back with their families, and, and they're working and no longer living under the street. I tell them about my Jesus. My Jesus is powerful. You see, a lot of people, listen to this, a lot of people are hearing about Jesus, but they're not seeing the miracle. Are you walking around holy and righteous? Can people see you and say, man, I know who he used to be, but look at who he is now. That is a man of God. That is a woman of God. That is a person that is an example of who Christ is. Honestly, guys, have you really died to yourself? He transformed my life. He saved me. Guys, I'll show you my fruits. The Bible says by their fruits you will know them. I've met so many people in the streets homeless about to die that now they're preaching in different countries. They're being ordained pastors and ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This walk is so real, guys. What got my attention? What blew my mind is that I grew up Catholic, guys. And I would come home and see a... A figure of Jesus Christ crucified on that cross. And I say, wow, poor man. 
he died. I didn't know he rose on the third day. I remember I sat down after we did that bet. The guy went with me and he did the, the bad things. And I went with him to church. I sat down and that pastor said something that changed my life forever. He says, only the children of God go to heaven. I was like, yes, I'm going to heaven. Because I'm a child of God. But now there's the creation of God. And there's the children of God. And I was like, okay, just got my attention. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And he rose on the third day victorious. The guy on the cross died and he rose. That's impossible. Jesus Christ, he was saying, is the Son of God. The incarnated God that came down in the flesh came to die for your sins. What is sin? Sin is a middle wall of separation that separates God from me, from men. And I was like, how do you knock that wall down? I want to knock that wall down. I want to come from being his creation. We were made in God's image. That's his attributes. Not that we look like him. We were made in his image. And now you want to become a son or a daughter of God. Guess what? That middle wall of separation has to come down. How does it come down? He says, all you have to do is Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, and you believe in your heart. Your heart is not the one that's beating in your chest. It's your will, the emotion of a man. If you believe it with all your will, with all your emotion, that God rose Jesus from the dead on the third day, it says, you shall be saved. That means that middle wall of separation will come down. And now you can have fellowship with the Father. When I heard that, I was like, I don't want to go to hell. But you know what's worse than hell? Is to be without you for eternity. I could put up with hell. But I can't put up with not being with you God. I want to be where you're at. You created me. And now I want to live with you for eternity. Guys if you've never heard this before. We are all designed to live forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. But it's your choice. To choose to live in heaven. Or in hell. Guys, I came to the front altar and I had a gun with me. And I was so upset. Because I was like, my father let me down. My family let me down. What if you're going to let me down? So I came to the front and I was scared. I didn't want to trust in Christ. I was scared. But I knew I wanted to go to heaven. And the pastor said, so you ready? And I was like, yes. He goes, well, just repeat this prayer. And I was like, all right, I'm ready to run in my knees 30 miles. I'm ready to just do anything. Slap myself on the floor. I want to suffer for him. I'm ready. He goes, just repeat this prayer. Father, and I just repeated the prayer. Come into my heart, Jesus, and be my Lord and Savior. And he goes, that's it. I was like, I opened my eyes. I said, what? It's that easy? Guys, I was so ignorant. I was so mad. This is why pastors works. Guys, it's very difficult. Pray for your pastor. Amen, amen. I was going to pull out my gun, and I was going to shoot him in the head. I felt he lied to me. By the way, somebody else did kill him. He was, uh, his daughter was dating this uh, young man. The young man went to prison. When he came out, he knocked on the door. Where's your daughter? Leave my daughter alone. Boom, he shot him in the chest and killed that pastor. But listen to this, guys. That's why I pray for your pastors. This is real serious. So now, I wanted to shoot him in the head. And I said, it can't be this easy. I didn't understand grace. I didn't understand the gift of God, his only son. I couldn't comprehend it at that moment. But then as I begin to read the word of God, I understood that grace is something I don't deserve. I deserve to go to hell. A lot of people say, what type of God would allow someone to go to hell? I say, what type of God would allow an unholy person to enter his holy throne? That's the type of God that I serve. So I started reading what grace was. And I thought it was all over there. That's it, I'm free. I'm going to heaven and I kept doing the things I used to do. And I remember people would tell me, Christians don't do that. Oh, God, all I got to do is ask for forgiveness. Said, no, it's not that simple, guys. If we were in, in, in a 10-story building and you were looking down, and I would tell you, at what point are you going to repent? On the way down or right before you jump? You're going to say, of course, before I jump. Guys, you don't have to live in sin. Every time you're about to smoke that cigarette, every time you're about to fall into fornication, every time that you want to just take a, a zip of that liquor, imagine yourself standing in the corner of that building looking down and saying, you know what? 
I'm going to repent. I'm going to turn my back to that sin. I'm not going to jump down and I'm going to walk away. I had to learn what repentance was. I wasn't taught that in a Baptist church. I had to understand that yes, he's an all-loving God, but he brings judgment upon his children. What happens is, now that God started living inside of me, there were things that I used to do that I could no longer do. So people say, how do you know if a person is saved if they have fruits of repentance? If you've given your life to, listen to this guys, and I'm almost done. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ 5, 10, 15 years ago, and you're still living the same lifestyle, you've confessed with your mouth, but you have not believed with your heart. This is serious. If people can look at you and say, wow, you're so different. Your lifestyle, though, what you used to do, you no longer do. If people cannot see that in you, you're not saved. You have not made that commitment with God. You have not been sealed by the Holy Spirit. If you can sin, guys, if you can sin and feel no conviction, that's a straight indication that you're going to hell. And hell's not a bad word, by the way. It's a place and it's a temporary place that will be thrown in the lake of fire. Hell was never created for none of you guys. Never. It was intended for Satan and the fallen angels. But because of sin, we have a choice to go to heaven or to go to hell. Maybe you've never heard a message like this before. Or maybe it's, it's making sense now. Wow. Maybe you're looking back and looking at your life and saying, do I have fruits of repentance? Maybe I did it for my mom. Maybe I did it for my friend. Maybe I did it because it was the right thing to do. Or maybe the pastor was looking at me like, better do it. But now you're saying, you know what? I'm ready to have this relationship now. I want all of us to close your eyes, guys. And please, let's have no distraction right now. This was my day when I understood the gospel. I didn't care who was looking. I didn't care if people were saying, I thought she was saved or he was saved. Man, it was just a moment where I was like, I want this relationship with God. Not because I'm going to go to hell. Because I love my Jesus. Because I love my God. Because he's loved me before the foundations of this world. He's loved me before I loved him. Guys, if that is you today, I'm not going to ask you to come to the front. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. The prayer is not going to save you. What's going to save you is that you confess with your mouth. You've probably done that before, but now you believe in your heart. And God rose Jesus from the dead. So you don't even have to say this out loud so nobody can hear you. I want you to keep this personal today. And I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come before you. In the name of Jesus. Today, I understand your gospel, your good news. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for me and he rose on the third day victoriously. Today, I open my heart and ask that you may come in and be my Lord and Savior.